हेलो एवरी वन मैं नीमिज मिनी सेठी आई होप यू ऑल आर स्टेइंग हेल्दी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एब्सोल्यूट रिलेटिव परमानेंट एंड लाइफ साइकिल इनकम हाइपोथेसिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एब्सोल्यूट इनकम हाइपोथेसिस एब्सोल्यूट इनकम हाइपोथेसिस आल्सो नोन एज केन्स कंजम्पशन फंक्शन एब्सोल्यूट इनकम हाइपोथेसिस बेसिकली स्टेट हाउ कंज्यूमर डिवाइड देयर डिस्पोजेबल इनकम बिटवीन सेविंग एंड कंजम्पशन Absolute income hypothesis basically state how consumer divide their disposable income between saving and consumption. That means some part of disposable income we save and some part we consume. And absolute income hypothesis based on psychological law of consumption. What do you mean by psychological law of consumption? According to psychological law of consumption, as income increase, consumption will also increase. But increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income because as income increase, people spend less and save more. For example, when I was unemployed, I had so many unfulfilled needs. But as I got a job within few year of my salary, I fulfilled my all basic needs. I I purchased car, home, mobile, laptop. Now as my salary will increase, I will save more and spend less because my basic need had already fulfilled. And rational consumer think about saving as their income increase because saving is a must for future security. That's why according to psychological law of consumption, as income increase consumption also increase but increase in consumption is smaller as compared to income because as income increase people spend less and save more and absolute income hypoth hypothesis is based on psychological law of consumption absolute income hypothesis also known as keynes consumption function equation c represent consumption a represent autonomous consumption b marginal propensity to consume yd disposable income properties of absolute income hypothesis non proportional relationship between income and consumption that means income and consumption don't increase at same proportion increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income as income increase average propensity to consume will fall but why because increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income that's why as income increase average propensity to consume fall marginal propensity to consume is greater than 0 but less than 1 but why this is formula to calculate marginal propensity to consume change in consumption over change in income if marginal propensity to consume is equal to 0 that means change in income lead to zero change in consumption but this is not possible change in uh, income definitely lead to change in consumption if marginal propensity to consume is equal to 1 that means we are consuming 100% of our income but we don't consume 100% of income increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income that's why according to absolute income hypothesis marginal propensity to consume will greater than 0 and less than 1 now we'll see diagram on x axis disposable income y axis consumption and saving income line consumption curve which is equal to a plus b y d as we earlier discuss equation e is our initial equilibrium point now suppose income increase from y to y1 it will lead to increase in consumption from c to c1 here you can see increase in uh, income is 50% but increase in consumption is only 20% so we can say that increase in consumption is smaller as compared to increase in income change in income 50% but change in consumption is only 20% so our mpc is equal to 0.4 here you can see 0.4 is uh, greater than 0 but less than 1 so we can say that our mpc will greater than 0 and less than 1 now we are going to talk about relative income hypothesis according to relative income hypothesis we care about our relative well being rather than absolute well being that means we try to maintain our standard of living equal to other member of society even we are not earning equal to them according to this hypothesis we try to maintain our standard of living equal to other member of society even we are not earning equal to them that's why if income of all member of society will increase at same proportion then our apc will remain constant it will not fall 
according to absolute income hypothesis as our income increase our apc fall our spending fall but according to relative income hypothesis if income of all all member of society increase at same proportion then our apc will remain constant our spending will remain constant it will not fall but how suppose there are two individual in society a and b income of a 10000 income of b 20000 income of a is half of income of b now suppose income of a and b has increased income of a has increased from 10 to 20 income of b has increased from 20 to 40 no doubt absolute income of a has increased from 10 to 20 but still his income is a half of uh, b that means absolute income absolute income of a has increased but still his relative income is same still his income is half of b that's why in order to maintain his standard of living equal to b a will spend more a will consume more if a will consume more that mean that's why apc of a will remain constant apc of a will not fall so according to absolute income hypothesis as income increase apc fall but according to relative income hypothesis apc will not fall it will remain constant now we will see diagram disposable income saving and consumption income line short run consumption uh, curve we have two individual a and b income of a is uh, y1 income of b is y2 now suppose income of a has increased from y1 to y2 and income of b has increased from y2 to y3 according to this consumption curve a should consume b y2 but actually a is consuming a1 y2 a is consuming a1 b more a is consuming a1 b1 extra but why because he want to maintain his standard of living equal to b similar according to this consumption curve b should consume ky3 but actually b consuming b1 y3 b is consuming this part extra because b is also imitating someone else whose income is higher than higher than him so we can say that in order to maintain their standard of living high people consume more that's why their apc not fall their apc remain constant now the permanent income hypothesis what do you mean by permanent income permanent income is long run average income or you can say that permanent income is that part of income which you expect to receive over a long period of time permanent income is that part of income which you expect to receive over a long period of uh, time but transitory income you don't expect to receive in future for example you win lottery you are not going to win lottery every day that's why this income you don't expect in uh, future according to this uh, hypothesis our consumption mainly depend on uh, permanent income not on transitory income that's why this hypothesis divide income and consumption into two part yp permanent uh, income y is t transitory income cp permanent consumption permanent consumption means which we normally consume and ct is a transitory consumption transitory consumption means our unexpected expenditure for example someone has to do suddenly so much expenditure on a hospital it will be called transitory consumption our permanent consumption depend on permanent income but there is no relationship between transitory income and transitory consumption how can you say that i will only go to hospital if i win a lottery so there is no relationship between transitory uh, income and transitory consumption according to permanent income hypothesis uh, people consumption decision mainly depend on long run expected income rather than current income long run expected income means permanent income according to this hypothesis people consumption decision mainly depend on long run expected income rather than current income that's why during long time period apc become equal to mpc because during long time period people become sure about their permanent income cp equal to kyp cp is a permanent consumption or you can say the long time period of consumption yp is a permanent income so permanent consumption depend on permanent income k is a proportion of uh, income which we spend on goods and services on x x we have income y x we have consumption and saving this is long run consumption curve that is equal to k y p this one we have already discussed c1 and c2 are short run consumption curve 
initial equilibrium point is E, initial income is O Y. Now suppose income has increased from Y to Y1. If increase in income due to transitory income, if our increase in income is transitory income, then we will consume E to Y1. But if increase in income due to permanent income, then we will consume E3 Y1. Here you can see if increase in income due to permanent income, then we consume E3 E2 more. But why? Because for transitory income, we are not sure. In future, we are able to earn or not. But for permanent income, we are sure because permanent income is our longer and expected income. That's why when increase in income due to permanent income, we consume more. Now we are going to talk about life cycle hypothesis. According to life cycle hypothesis, people want to maintain their consumption level same throughout the life, either they are earning or not. That means people try to save more money during their middle age when their income is very high so that they can consume this money during their old age when they are not earning. Please listen carefully. According to this hypothesis, people try to save more money during their middle age when their income is very high so that they can use this money during their old age when they are not earning because they want to maintain their consumption level same throughout the life either they are earning or not. In this diagram you can see on x axis we have lifespan, y axis we have consumption and income. This curve shows our income, this line shows our consumption. So here you can see before the age of 20 our uh, consumption is more than income that's why this part shows negative saving. After the age of uh, 60 again consumption is more than income so this part shows negative saving. But between uh, 20 and 60 you can see income is more than consumption that's why during this time period people will save more money so that they can use uh, 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 their saving for the consumption in their old age. So we can say that people try to maintain their consumption level throughout their life same. Now we will see formula. In this formula C is consumption, W is wealth and we assume wealth is equal to 1 lakh. R is a working life. He started a job at the age of 20 and got a retirement at the age of 60. 60 minus 20 equal to 40, 40 will be called working life. Y is annual income and we assume his annual income is 40,000. T is the remaining year of life. His life expectancy is 70. He started a job at the age of 20. 70 minus 20 is equal to 50, 50 will be called remaining year of life. Now we will put all this value in this formula and solve this and our answer will 34,000 per year. That means according to all this data, in order to maintain our consumption level same throughout the life, we will consume 34,000 per year. So this is all about consumption hypothesis. I think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.